I am a list maker and a checker offer. It's just how my brain works. You give me a 20 page manual on how to build a desk, a bookcase, a TV stand, or whatever, and I will have that built and ready to go in no time. Some assembly required is music to my ears. Steps just make sense to me. So recently, when I became a Christian, I followed through a series of steps. Now, these steps weren't at all easy or simple. Finding God, reading scripture, accepting grace. But still, it was a process and all very important milestones into becoming a Christian. But once you become a Christian, then what? How does anyone move forward and grow from there? Well, that's a question for the ages. You see, there was this group of people in the 1700s that struggled with that same question. And way back then, before Google, when you had a really hard question, you asked the smartest guy or gal you knew. And for that group of people at that time, that guy was John Wesley. You see, this group struggled with what they saw happening around them, which was people going to church on Sunday and then pretty much blowing off being a Christian the rest of the week. And these folks, they didn't want to live like that. They wanted to live their whole life with Christ. Well, our guy, John Wesley, he developed three principles to follow for living a godly life to help his friends live fully in Christ. So when I found out that there were only three steps, I thought, great. I will have this knocked out of the park and be perfectly Christian in no time. Number one, do no harm. This may take longer than I thought. You see, when I looked up what Wesley meant by that, there was a long list of examples. He meant not only don't do physical harm, but don't cheat, don't quarrel, obey laws, be kind, and be considerate. Now, I think everyone has struggled with their fair share of this and more. I know I have. For example, when I was a teenager, I was angry. Not just rebellious, although I was that too, but angry. I mean, really angry. I was a tornado of hormones made up of hate and anger. And during one particularly heated argument with my mother, I yelled, I hate you with all the intensity and emotion that accompanies that statement. Now think about that for a second. The woman who carried me in her body for nine months, who gave me life, I told her I hated her and I meant it. When I think about the harm that this caused, it breaks my heart. But no one is perfect. We all have harsh thoughts or words. Have you ever thought or said something to someone who maybe cut in front of you in the parking lot or stole your spot in line? And maybe you didn't say it out loud. Maybe it was under your breath or in your head. But when we do that, we're harming that person and ourselves. You see, when we do that kind of harm, we're not following the example that Jesus set out before us or the directive that Wesley gives us. Okay, so number one, it's a challenge, but I'm working on it. Number two, do good. Okay, awesome, I got that. I hold doors open for people. I ask how they're doing. I might even listen before formulating my own response. I donate to causes. That's all there is to this, right? Wrong. You see, Wesley didn't say, do good when it works out for you or when it's convenient or for those you really think need it. He wanted his followers to dig deep and truly do good. Because again, when I, d when I looked this up, there were of course more definitive examples. It was like he knew I was looking for loopholes. Now, I enjoy helping people, and I'm always one to lend an ear, give advice, take the time to talk or smile. But sometimes it's hard to be as kind and compassionate as Wesley was probably thinking. There are times that we encounter people that aren't receptive for help, to help. A smile that goes unreturned, a hello that's met with a scowl, an offer to open a door or carry a bag is met with an indignant eye roll and a scoff. 
So when I recount, encounter those people, I remember at one time, I was an angry teenage girl that didn't want any help. And unfortunately, I still am her sometimes. There are times that I can feel that anger and sadness just lurking in the darkness and telling me I'm beyond help and unlovable. Principle two, easy in theory, but how do we do good? Real, true good when we're struggling to be compassionate to ourselves. Principle three might hold the answer. Number three, stay in love with God. In this principle, Wesley wants us to continually develop our relationship with the Lord through reading scripture, through prayer, through active worship. And again, on the surface, this seems fairly easy. But how many of us in our busy lives take the time to lift up praises every day? And when we consider that every day that we wake up and we live our lives, we're receiving a blessing beyond imagination. But do we always take the time to lift those praises up? Do we always remember to pray before bed or at a meal or when a friend is in need? No, we don't. We get busy. So it's important to make time and space for, to stay in love with God in our daily lives. What happens when we remember to stay in love with God is not only are we pouring out our love to him, but we have opened the door and received his love in return. And folks, that love is powerful. It is deep and it is never ending and it comes without strings. And it is so deep and strong that God sent his one and only son, Jesus, to suffer and die for us. So by receiving that love, it fuels us to go out and share that with others. And again, when I think back to that angry teenage girl, and even now as an adult, there are times that I was sure I was beyond help. And I can tell you that that angry teenage girl and that lost adult woman, they never believed that they were truly loved. You see, I didn't know that I could be loved by God through his son, Jesus. And even though I was living life on my own, unknowingly following the first two, first two Wesleyan principles, I was oblivious to the third principle and the importance of loving God. And while I was living life far away from God, feeling unloved and unworthy, I didn't know that he was actually whispering to me, I love you. And it wasn't until I started to fall in love with God that I understood. Then one day, as a full-grown adult woman, I heard him. I was struggling with so many challenges in my life, and I felt so alone. And one day, I was just about to give up. I was about to give up on my dreams, give up on ever feeling happy again. And there was a moment of darkness and tears. And I heard him call to me, I love you. And I knew I was loved. Unendingly, unconditionally, passionately loved by Jesus. And I knew I had to learn how to live this life in a better way, a way that reflected that love that I had received. So as a new Christian, I realized how important it was to live these three principles every day. But as I gave it more thought, what seemed to me as the logical place to start was with principle three, and stay in love with God. You see, if we stay in love with God and return, in return receive his love, that love gives us the strength to fully live out those other two principles. And we are backed by the most powerful force in the universe, which is the true, amazing love of God. <laughs>